सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डिस्कसिंग यू एच वी थ्री एंड यस्टरडे वी कंप्लीटेड लेक्चर एटीन वे वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट द को एग्जिस्टेंस एंड इट्स एक्सप्रेशन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इन नेटनेस एंड नेचुरल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स इन द फोर ऑर्डर्स इन नेचर एंड विद दैट वी हैड आस्ट यू to look at um some of this uh things that we had talked about to contemplate on them and to try and reflect on some of the things we talked about so the points for self reflection one was to explore what is your innate desire or basic aspiration the desire to live with continuous happiness or otherwise we keep talking about it but to really look into yourself and see is that what you want or is it something else and then see you know what is fulfilling this desire so we keep saying when you have the right understanding you will have the right feeling and then you will have continuity of happiness but if i don't believe this if this is there as information but i really assume something else then it will not be in my living similarly is the basis of your self organization right understanding or it is otherwise so we wanted to reflect on that also check for yourself whether happiness is your innate or true nature or something you need to get from outside this question we keep asking again and again because this is the crux this is the important part as long as i feel that i have to get this happiness from outside i will keep searching for it outside as long as i am searching for it outside in the form of physical facility in the form of um getting the right feeling from others till then i will keep focusing outside and i will not be paying attention inside so if we really are able to see that this happiness is our innate or true nature and not something that we need to get out from outside then our living should be in accordance with this so if our focus is on say having tasty food or enjoying the sunday by going out for a movie and um say having lunch or dinner outside and those kind of things if our focus is there that means we are trying to get the happiness from outside if our focus is on having the right feeling and with that with the feeling of relationship spending time with the family now here you have your focus has shifted somewhere else you have put relationship in front so in our living this will reflect and so we were asking you to observe in yourself what you see regarding these questions we had asked and if anybody would like to share their observations we can take your observations now namaskar madam namaskar to all namaste madam as i have been exploring uh, my innate desire and a basic aspiration is to live with uh, continuous happiness only because uh, if i am not happy i definitely try to get something that something is happiness only but i observed suppose if i lack understanding anywhere any time then definitely i lose my happiness what i have understood so that right understanding i am trying to uh, inculcate or i am trying to uh, 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 habituate or i can say i try to 
have proper understanding right understanding always from time to time but i am, have been unable to be alert always however uh, the improvement i have been uh, observing but every time being uh, alert uh, is uh, uh, i'm trying and uh, that is the basis of uh, uh, my uh, um, means what being happy uh, because uh, the, that is the reason why i should try for that and uh, right understanding is the basis and uh, that is the basis of my self organization also what i have understood and the next question you have given in this uh, assignment check whether uh, these natural characteristics and innateness of me are natural expression uh, from the beginning just not with uh, you can leave that yes madam you to check yeah, whether yeah, yeah. this is your innate nature or you are looking for it outside that uh, is madam, madam, I, madam i have not got could you please repeat is happiness your innate nature or are you looking for it outside yes is, madam it is my innate nature only that and how uh, is it in your living uh, living is uh, to some extent only i have but i have been trying to increase it is what i'm saying yeah so yeah madam. you know we have yet understood that if we have yeah, yeah. It, then it will be there in our living definitely madam so uh, this thing of you know not being aware what is the reason for not being aware if we see the reason is this only yeah yeah madam want to pay more attention outside yeah Isn't yeah. It? yeah madam so ultimately uh, this is the point to be able to see that we are not able to see within because we have not awakened to the higher activities we have not awakened to the higher activities because we are not making enough effort inside we are not making enough effort inside because we still think somewhere this assumption is very strong that i have to do something outside in order to be happy yes madam really so ultimately we have to go beyond that yes madam yes madam yeah, and sometimes uh, i may be amazed with my previous preconditions i was uh, uh, i i can say i was tempted and I, fe I felt happy also i mean to say suppose if i was angry and like that sometimes uh, then uh, i i was calm like that means what that was the power of uh, my preconditioning even though i do i know that it is uh, not my original state even then so that also i observed madam what do you mean i mean suppose something uh, suppose if i if anybody says uh, uh, not good i can say not proper then okay lack of his understanding he is saying like that but i was angry and i shouted and then <laughs> i became calm so that also uh, means what previously it was these type of situations were more now uh, these type of situations are less however they are going on uh, that's what i want to say yeah so when you were angry were you able to notice within you did you feel comfortable or uncomfortable no no man not at all comfortable angry okay. itself uh, yeah but at that moment i was unable to uh, recall <laughs> just after a few seconds like that then i recalled yes so if we keep noticing these moments madam we we'll start noticing them earlier and earlier yes madam okay before mm. we react before we shout out mm. Mm, madam yeah. nice thank you for your observations thank you madam uh, namaste ma'am uh, namaste to all uh, ma'am yesterday i keep on observing from uh, morning to till night my uh, feeling uh, i was not disturbed by uh, the external activity i uh, i was very calm ma and uh, i planned in the morning this much work i have to do uh, most of the time if i am if i were not 
uh, execute that work i felt uh, bad about myself uh, in the earlier but uh, yesterday also two or three things i was not able to complain even though i uh, uh, put uh, means uh, i do that work continuously but i am not getting a time but uh, i check my feeling yeah uh, i i plan but i was not able to do so tomorrow how can i plan to complete that work that's how my thoughts were going and feeling also good ma'am and uh, one more thing uh, i want to share uh, i was cool and calm but my uh, uh, colleague asked me to uh, ma'am do you have the lunch please have it uh, it's already getting uh, late like that uh, he show the concern to me by the time i check my feeling i feel uh, happy uh, um, means my question is uh, whether uh, i feel happy because of her words uh, because she is showing a care and concern to me uh, means whether still i am depending on that uh, uh, happiness outside or whether this feeling is okay uh, that is my question ma'am yeah so this we have to see see uh-huh. this is why we say you know if things are perfect outside mm. then we will never know because we think we are safe we know mm-hmm. we are we have the right understanding we are we feel good we are mm-hmm. okay na mm-hmm. mm-hmm. but actually it is the effect of the outside that the outside everything is right for us mm-hmm. the challenge comes when things mm-hmm. outside are not to our liking then what mm-hmm. happens Mm-hmm. then how are we that is significant to see mm-hmm. that is why in the course of the day mm-hmm. maybe there are days when there is no such conflict but then there will mm-hmm. be many days when people have different opinions people say different things mm-hmm. somebody else who lacks understanding mm-hmm. may get angry may react mm-hmm. may have behavior which is not to our liking then how are we that is significant to see yesterday in the hindi session somebody mentioned that when we are with nature we are you know everything is fine with all the other orders everything is fine but with human beings the problem comes because we have different language so really it's not about the language it's about what is my feeling towards the other that is the one that is significant that is the one that is causing us the unhappiness this feeling of opposition this disturbance within no as long mm. as the feeling of relationship is there i feel good and mm. if the other is talking you know the same ideas that i have same opinions that i have then i feel my relatedness to the other and i have this feeling of relationship with me so i feel happy but the challenge comes when things outside are not to my liking in fact we should be thankful to those people <laughs> with whom yeah. we have you know trouble dealing with because those are the ones that are helping us to move forward in our exploration because then we question again we slipped again this happened again we shouted huh? but as long as things outside are, everything is to my liking then uh, it is hard to see it could be that we are just in the effect of the outside therefore we feel happy no yeah ma'am and one more thing uh, if i did a mistake i worry a lot rather than if somebody done a mistake ma'am and mm-hmm. because more and more contemplation will be going on why i am doing like that i should not na so they are getting uh, hurt or maybe something like uh, with my words so i worried a lot when i did a mistake rather than the others ma'am yeah. see worry is it naturally acceptable to you to worry no ma'am. yeah no. yeah mm-hmm. 
So as long as you are worrying, you are uncomfortable inside, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 So whether you blame somebody else or you blame yourself, either way, this is not a good feeling to have because you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Rather than do that, next time you find yourself saying, "Why did I do it? I should not. I should not." Rather than do that, see what is naturally acceptable. How you mm -hmm. could have been different, mm -hmm. and move on. Don't keep thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Leave it. Mm -hmm. Once you have tried to see what is naturally acceptable, next time mm -hmm. around, if something like this happens, then mm -hmm. I should have the right feeling. Then mm. my response can be different. Yeah. Now, once you have seen that, mm. now you leave it, drop it. Don't keep holding on to it. Mm. Don't keep thinking about it, going round and round about it, because mm. all that time that you are thinking about it, you are making mm. yourself uncomfortable, mm. and it's not really helping in anything, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So for future. how what is naturally acceptable how could i have responded rather than reaction if i can see that then okay for next time i have decided what to do now move on let's go back to what we are doing at present rather than worrying about it can you see that yeah ma'am yeah yeah when i am aware about the, the thing means i have attention about myself uh, the mistakes are very less ma'am mm -hmm. like uh, uh, yeah when i give an attention what i am talking what i am doing that yeah. time i observe that uh, uh, mistakes are very less but when i am not aware about myself that time it happen ma'am i observe the thing uh, these things ma'am yeah right So the solution is very simple. Yeah, with me only. Yeah, yeah ma'am. I have to give an attention to myself. Um, always, always. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice. Thank you. So, um, with that, I think we can go forward to the next lecture. Yes, lecture nineteen. So this coexistence and its expression that we've been talking about, you know, in the four orders of nature, how do we see it within us? That is the topic in this lecture. That means. so if you look at you know we said existence is coexistence and it is in the form of units that are submerged in space right this submergence we cannot see until we reach the level of the activity of realization so many of you had this question that i am not able to see the coexistence well that's true because we have not reached the activity of realization yet so it will take time so this submergence in space you will only be able to see when you have the ability to see such a subtle reality right now we don't have that ability potential is there in each one of us but we have to awaken to the activities and if we have not awakened to contemplation we can't expect to be awakened to realization so i should be able to see at least my relationship with others my participation with others Now, and i should be able to see it in my living and share it in my living then we can move forward but if i don't see that yet if i have not awakened even to the activity of contemplation how can i expect to see the space 
isn't it? So that is one thing. Now, if we look at these units, we talked about this before also. There are five aspects to them: the form, the property, the natural characteristic, the innateness, and the coexistence. So, if you look at them, we may not be seeing these natural characteristic, innateness, coexistence. These parts in the unit, we may be seeing only the superficial part, what we see through the gross eyes of the body. and perhaps a little bit through our own rationalizing so you'll find that when it comes to form you can see the form through your eyes isn't it so if you look outside you see trees and you can see so many types of trees isn't it you see a uh, tree which has mangoes you see a tree which has papayas you see a flowering tree you see a you know shrub you see so many different varieties of trees plants shrubs they all have a different form can you see that they all look different from one another they have a certain shape the color of the leaves may be little different you know, some leaves some trees may have light colored leaves some trees may have darker colored leaves the shape of the leaves is different so you can see that there is lot of variety in nature if you are if your focus is on the form and the form keeps changing too this also you can see so in certain seasons the leaves look a certain color in other seasons the leaves may be of a different color or they may fall off so you hardly see any leaves so like that you will notice that the form has lot of variety and it keeps changing the next um, you know out of the five aspects that we were talking about the next aspect is the property property means the effect that one unit has on another unit so here you have to think about things you analyze things you use logic you use you know you compare things and then you are able to see some part of the property also the effect of one unit on another unit so like we talk of you know you eat a certain type of plant and you notice that it nurtures your body now this is the impact of this no yeah? the property here also you find there's lot of variety and this is also changing so we talked of this before you eat a banana in the morning it is supposed to be very nurturing for the body you may have heard that statement you know banana is like gold in the morning then they go on further to say banana is like silver in the afternoon and then they go on to say banana is like lead at night so the same banana when i eat it in the morning it has one type of effect on the body when i eat it in the afternoon it has a different type of effect on the body when i eat it at night it has a totally different effect on the body so you can see that the property also keeps changing with the season with the time of day with so many you know correlated activities so you can see that the form and the property keeps changing but if you look at the further aspects the next three aspects one is the natural characteristic that is the participation in the larger order 
where you see the relatedness between the units. If you look at the innateness, the self-organization within every unit, the harmony within the unit, within each unit and also when they combine, I mean when they participate in the larger order, then the harmony of this whole larger order also and the coexistence or the submergence. These three aspects, here you see there is no change. It is definite. It is continuous. It seems to be like this, has always been like this, is like this and continues to be like this. And here you see the universality. You see in every single unit, no matter how different the form may be, no matter how different the property may be, but you are able to see that when it comes to the relatedness with other units, it is definite, unchanging. When you see the innateness of that plant or you know the soil or whatever, unchanging. And the submergence, of course, is the same for all. So how to see this? Like we are saying, as we awaken to the higher activities, we are able to see this. The form and the property, we can say, we can see, you know, the form we see through the gross eyes. The property, we can make some estimate about it through rationalizing things, through information, you know, when we think about it. But beyond that, how do we see this, which is the essence at the base? For this, we have to awaken to the higher activities. So when we awaken to contemplation, when we awaken to understanding, when we awaken to realization, all these put together, we are calling right understanding. So this, when we, uh, these activities, when we awaken to, and when we are able to see this essence, then there is an assurance within yourself, isn't it? You feel assured that, okay, this is how it is. It doesn't change. Suddenly, it's not like something is happening, which is, disturbing me and something that, you know, I cannot be assured of. So I feel good about it. I feel assured. So if you look, you know, these five aspects, this has to be seen by the self. And how we see, we see through the different so, of course, we use the sense organs of the body. But, like we've mentioned earlier, with the gross eyes, some reflection forms in the eyes. But who makes sense out of it? Who decides what it is? I do, isn't it? If you see, we spoke of three things. Who is seeing? Or who is the knower? what is to be known and what is the process. This we discussed earlier. So who is the knower or the seer? It is the self, isn't it? It is me. I am the one who sees. What do we see? What is to be known? Of course, the entire existence. I need to, because I am embedded in this existence and I I'm affected by this existence, so I need to know about it. I am a part of it. So I need to know all the way up to the whole existence, the submergence, all of it. And what is the process? The process is what we've been talking about, awakening to the higher activities. So when we see the form, now through the gross eyes, some reflection forms on the retina. I make sense out of that image 
and I decide, okay, this is a tree. But if I am looking only at the level of selecting tasting, now what it looks like, the form, the shape, then that is all I see, the shape, size, color, and then I give it a name. So I say, oh, this is a mango tree, and I move on. Now I say, I know, that tree is a mango tree, I know. What do I know? I have only been able to see the form, isn't it? That is all I know about it. So you will see that when we are looking through only these lowermost activities, selecting, tasting, then we are only able to see the form. If we move forward to the property, then we are using the next higher level activity, which is of thinking, analyzing, comparing, using logic, reasoning, and so on. So here you can see the impact of one unit on another. For example, here this example has been given, heating a utensil by fire. So you can see that when you put a utensil on the gas, on the chula, on the, you know, your whatever you are using, fire. So, here the utensil becomes warm. You can say this is the effect of the fire on the utensil. Or you can say this is the property of the utensil that it becomes heated when in contact with fire. Similarly, you can see the sunlight. When you go out in the sun, and the sunlight falls on the skin, your skin feels warm. So that you can see this proper sunlight. It's not just the light, but it also provides warmth. So now here you see you're using the lowermost activity also, but at the same time, you're also analyzing, comparing, and being able to see this part, the property. So when we say, I see, what I see depends on where I am looking from. So we said, the form, I am seeing through the sensation, yeah? through the body, and then I am also using the lowermost activity in the self, tasting, selecting. So, body and self are being used to see the form. And some part of the property also I can see with the help of this. So, like we talked of the utensil and the fire. So, one is the seeing part, you are using the body. And the other is the self. Some part of the property, the analyzing and all that, you need something more than tasting, selecting. You need to use your thinking capacity to see the impact, the effect. So this much you can see with these lower activities in the B2 block. But what is at the essence? For that, the body has no role. Zero root. Here, you know, the natural characteristic, that means the relatedness between the units, the participation of the units in the larger order, this you can't see through the body. If you see the innateness, the self-organization of the units, how they are self-organized, how they are doing things in a certain harmonious way, in a very definite manner, how the cells, the units, the, you know, whichever unit, whichever order, they are coming together, 
this you can only see through the, the activity of understanding in the within the self and of course like we mentioned if you want to see the submergence you want to be able to see the space then you should be awakened to the activity of realization or you won't be able to see it so you can see that for the essence what is definite what is universal what is continuous which is the real part of what you need to see that part you can't see at all through the body that part you have to directly see through the self through awakening to the higher activities to the self in the self so if you look at you know currently how we are teaching our children the systems of knowledge that we are using what are we talking about we are seeing what things look like and we are talking about what the impact is of one unit on another some part of the property but we are failing to see the essence that which is definite that which is universal we are failing to see the participation of these units in the larger order we are failing to see the self organization we are failing to see the submergence therefore we are not able to see the relationship therefore we think that life is a struggle we think that this is how it is so we have a feeling of opposition for others we only see contradictions we don't see the harmony so we say no nature also it is life is a struggle you see the lion eats up the deer and so it is a struggle for survival and so on we have all these ideas because we are not able to see what is in the essence at the base and we continue to propagate it through our systems of knowledge so we neglect these things yeah same thing we are saying here so if you see like if i can you know relate it to say what is taught in the medical college for medical students so you talk about the form yeah the body and how the impact is there of the various hormones and this and that and you know the various chemicals and things anything that we are able to see with the help of our gross eyes or with the help of instruments that we have we recognize that we label that we give a name to it and we see its significance its impact but then we are missing some part a major chunk that is at the root at the base what is there so we lose out when we don't acknowledge the self because we see the body and we see different forms so we think everybody is different and therefore we see these differences and get a feeling of opposition within us because i don't see the similarity but if i could see the self which can't be seen through the gross eyes of the body you need to be able to awaken a little bit you need to be able to look within then you slowly start seeing what is at the essence then you can see this relatedness the harmony the coexistence step by step as you keep going and then we may be able to come out of the present day situation where there is so much opposition so much disharmony struggle this is what we are seeing today two nations are quarreling there is talk of war even at the peace summit people talk of preparation of war 
preparation for war so that there can be peace i mean just see what we are doing because we are constantly seeing the other as a threat to me so i have a feeling of opposition for the other i don't see my relatedness with the other namaste didi namaste all a uh, question just to observe a person who is uh, trying for job or any source of income and in that case uh, should we call it call it that is struggle for existence uh, or we can how can we explain him regarding the self and its activity and having the um, peace of mind or continuous happiness yeah so if you see this we have been saying even this question we asked in the um assignment is happiness and you know our innate nature or is it something to get from outside this question if we answer then we can get the answer to this see right now what happens is today if you see you know there are many 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 avenues for students young students young adults to get you know to have a livelihood isn't it yeah earlier we used to think of only certain careers and of course we don't think of farming agriculture we have certain preconditionings this kind of job i want so now you see that everybody is rushing to become an engineer or a doctor na yeah? so everybody is rushing means there will be so many graduates and where are you going to find the jobs for all these people so was there a need look at things in a more holistic way so can we see that this is not the only avenue no this is not the only route one has then there are many many channels through which one can make a living isn't it one doesn't have to be stuck to that i have to do such and such education so that i get such a such job and you'll see at the back of it again there is something like i need a pay package that is so much so i start with that many a time we start looking at it how much will i get but if i have my relatedness see many a times within the family also there are children growing up when they grow up they can as well you know if there is a family business or there is some family income coming in they can as a family help in that that choice we are making but we want to go for what we call higher education somewhere outside or somewhere far away away from the home then we go there we set up a new home now all that will build up the cost isn't it so we want to have a big house then we have to look at the emis the emis are very huge therefore i must get a job that will be able to cater to this kind of emi so i start looking from there itself that i need a job with such and such salary and you see how all our preconditionings are forcing us to move in this direction but if we could see you know if we were staying in the same house we could be together relationship we can fulfill the relationship in a better manner we can be there for each other and at the same time we can help out in the whole earnings in the family so the family earning is one earning but we don't see it like this we see even there separate nets no mm-hmm. so if there are two children they both have their own earning they will have their bank account separate even in the case of spouse now you see 
the, everybody has a different bank account. In fact, for tax purposes, they expect you to have single name and so on. So we are moving in that direction where we can't see our relatedness with the very next person with us. What to say of you know all other units? But the change can be brought about. It was not like this once upon a time, and we can come back to. I'm not saying development is bad. Development is very good. Technology is very good. But let's not forget the the essence at the base. What are we doing all this for? Every other unit in nature is able to survive fine. But for us, it is a struggle. Why? If we look into it, we'll find we have created all these boundaries because of which we think that all this is a struggle. Can you see this? Yes. But my uh, specific point is that while one is trying hard, uh, I mean, means uh, across the competition, means the co applicants are there, but there are limited posts, and uh, one has to try for that neck to neck. So, in that case, should we call that struggle for existence or not? That was my what I'm saying. See, whatever I am doing within me, that is significant. Whatever I am feeling within me is significant. Now, mm -hmm. If I only see this as my channel of making a living, then I will see it as struggle. I will see the other participants as opponents. Somebody yeah. else should not take that job. I must get that job. So you see what is happening? I'm yeah. starting out with that feeling of opposition. How can I be happy? Even yeah. if I get the job, even if I make that money, but I'm constantly with that feeling of opposition. These are the people I will work with. And I'm working with feeling of opposition. They should not get ahead. I am must be ahead. So all this is our own preconditioning. Now, things like agriculture, farming. We have a certain mindset that we don't want to dirty our hands. So this kind of job is for people who are uneducated. We say like that. But is it so? I mean, ultimately that job or you know that livelihood is a very wonderful way you are next to nature the health of the body is much better being you know working with the soil working with nature there is abundance in nature when you grow things you find there is abundance you put one seed you get so much fruit but today you know our whole view of things has become lopsided. So even, you know, if, if all the farmers could get their due, what the effort that they put in, how much the yield they get, if they could get their due, then more and more people would do farming. Mm. Yes. Because the farmers very often are not given their rightful due. So people are moving away from it. Otherwise, if you see, there is abundance of land. There is enough, you know, this calculation was done earlier. And there is enough land for everybody to be able to grow their food, to be able to, you know, um, sustain themselves. But we don't look at those options because we have this mindset that... Um, this kind of job is what I will do. That kind of job I will not do. I have to touch the cow dung. Oh, no, no. That's not a job for me. I cannot do that. No? Mm -hmm. yes. So, let's go further. Yeah. So, what do we need to do? We have to set our system of knowledge right. We have to be able to bring in our system this, um, you know, being able to see the essence, seeing that which is definite and universal. So for that, we have to awaken to the higher activities. Then we'll be able to see the relationship, the harmony, the coexistence around us, 
in the nature, in existence. So many of the problems that we are facing today, we'll find we have easy solutions to them. Because now there will be no problem. Because now we can see the similarity. Now we see the relationship. In a family, why does the mother give the child first and then eat? Because she sees the relationship. If, there was, if she was not seeing the relationship, she would eat up everything and not bother whether there is enough for the child or not. That doesn't happen. Why? Because she is able to see the relationship. Today, so many people are going hungry while there is so much wastage of food. Why? Because we don't see our relationship with those that are suffering ill health or those that are starving, not having enough to eat for the day. While we may be, or not necessarily we, many people may be um, you know, overeating, overindulging and wasting so much food, isn't it? So it's not that resources are less or that there is a struggle, but we see it like that because we have our own preconditionings, our own limitations that we have put for ourselves because we don't see the essence, we don't see the relatedness. We don't see this design of nature. So when we are working on seeing what is of the essence, what is definite, what is universal, that is the relatedness, the self-organization, the submergence. And this is through awakening to the higher activities of contemplation, understanding, realization. Then we are slowly able to see this whole existence in a different light. So when we are awakening to the activity of contemplation, then we see these units not as separate units, but we see all these units coming together and forming a bigger whole. No? So there may be one tiny unit and then more and more and more come together and ultimately they combine or they participate together for the larger good and they work together and there is harmony. There is harmony not only in each and every single unit but ultimately all these units and nature as a whole. It is very much self-organized in a very definite manner. So there's a lot of assurance with this, isn't it? And then of course when we get to the activity of realization, we can see the submergence. So we see all these units submerged in space. We are seeing the whole thing, the whole existence as a whole, one unit. It shouldn't say unit because then that causes confusion, but as a as one whole thing, not as separate, patchy, isolated units. So as we keep moving from the lower to the higher activities, all this slowly we are able to see. So this we can see sequentially when we are going from below up. But when we are seeing from the top, Once we reach realization, then the unfolding will be a little different manner that we will see. And so far, whatever we have spoken of, any questions are there? We'll take the questions. So this is very important and significant to see that where are we looking from? Are we looking only from the selecting tasting point? Or are we looking at the rationality, you know, analyzing things and just looking at the impact of one unit on another unit? Or are we looking beyond that? Are we able to see beyond this to be able to see that which is definite, 
that which is not changing, that which is at the base of all these, this superficial what we see right now. So we see a bird flying, we look at it, we see the form, perhaps, you know, the shape, the color, and we say, oh, this is a coil, or this is a crow, or this is a whatever. And we move on, like we know it. So it's a very superficial kind of information. You can't even call it knowledge. So we have to go beyond this. We have to look beyond this and therefore the significance of why we have to awaken to the higher activities because we don't get enough information from this, what we, what we are trying to do at the surface. Even though today we have such detailed, um, you know, so much um, analysis we do, so much detail we go into in small units, but then we are not seeing the big picture. We are not seeing that which is unifying this whole big picture. So when we are missing that big part, obviously we have misconceptions about the existence, about everything in the existence. So we'll stop here and we'll go forward um, tomorrow. We'll reflect on this. I'll put an assignment in the group also.